What if I told you that scientists in Africa, yeah, in Africa, are talking about a potential HIV cure? One where people could actually stop taking their meds and remain virus-free for, get this, over a year and a half. It's certainly grabbing headlines, a potential game changer if it proves to be true. It really feels like we're at a turning point, right? I mean, for decades, living with HIV has meant, well, managing it. RT has been a lifesaver, no question, keeping the virus at bay, but always, always with that daily reminder of the condition. It's been about coexisting, not eradicating. Exactly. But now this research out of Durban, South Africa is giving us a glimmer of something different, something, dare I say, close to a cure. Durban being the epicenter in many ways of this epidemic makes it all the more impactful. Absolutely. And the results, they're pretty stunning. 20% of the folks in this study, they stopped their HIV meds. And guess what? No detectable virus after 18 months. That's huge. Sustained viral suppression without medication, that's the holy grail. And for some, it seems within reach. Yeah, and this isn't just some whisper in a lab. This was presented at the 2025 conference on retroviruses, so the scientific community is buzzing about this. Peer review, debate, scrutiny, it's all happening, which is a good sign. Rigorous science at work. So that's what we're doing today, a deep dive into this potential breakthrough. What's the science? What do the results really mean? And most importantly, what could this mean for you? Let's unpack it step by step. All right, so combination immunotherapy, that seems to be the core of this trial. Can you break that down for us? You know, not all of us are immunologists. Sure. Essentially, it's about empowering the body's own defenses, the immune system, to fight HIV. It's not just one drug, it's a combination, a multi-pronged attack. And they did this in a very specific sequence, right? Starting with early art treatment, why was it so vital for participants to begin that almost immediately after infection? Well, two main reasons. First, think of it like this. HIV, it can be sneaky. It can hide out in these little reservoirs in the body, even when RT is doing its job. But early treatment, it limits the formation of those reservoirs. Less hiding places for the virus. So you're hitting it hard and fast before it can dig in. Precisely. And second, starting RT early, it preserves the immune system. It's like you're going into battle, but you're making sure your army is strong and ready to fight. Makes sense. Okay, so step one, hit it hard, protect the defenses. Then comes the immune boosting stage. What kind of drugs are we talking about here and how do they train the body to fight HIV, you know, naturally? Well. The specifics will be in the published research, but broadly, these drugs, they stimulate specific parts of the immune response, the ones critical for controlling HIV. Kind of like turning up the volume on certain defenses. Exactly. Right. Some activate killer T cells. Those are the ones that directly target and destroy infected cells. Others boost these broadly neutralizing antibodies, sort of like super antibodies that can attack a wide range of HIV strains. So you're not just fighting the virus. You're teaching the body to be a better fighter on its own. Exactly. You're giving the immune system a targeted workout, getting it HIV fit. I like that, HIV fit. So step one, early treatment. Step two, boost the defenses. Mm -hmm. And then the big test, stopping Arte. I imagine this was done super carefully with doctors watching closely. What were they looking for at this point? This is the moment of truth. You're essentially saying, okay, immune system, can you handle this on your own? Researchers would be monitoring the viral load meticulously. That's the amount of virus in the blood. So ideally it stays undetectable. Ideally, yes, or at least extremely low and stable. They'd also be looking at overall health, any signs of the virus rebounding, making sure everything is okay. Okay, so after all that, we get to the results and they're pretty remarkable. 30% of the participants, they controlled HIV without medication for almost a year. 20% still virus-free at the end of the trial, 55 weeks in. And then, this is amazing, four individuals over 18 months off RT and still going strong. It's very encouraging. That sustained control, especially for that long, it suggests the potential for, well, maybe not a cure in the traditional sense, but something very close. And a lead researcher was quoted as saying, this shows that functional HIV cure research, it is possible in Africa, right where it's needed most. That's powerful. Absolutely. Doing the research where the need is greatest, ensuring that any solutions will be relevant and accessible. Now, it's important to say, and the information is very clear on this, these results don't mean everyone can just stop their meds tomorrow. This was a controlled trial, specific interventions. Right. It's early days. More research is needed to understand who benefits most, how to apply this safely and effectively in the real world. But the takeaway is, for some people, their immune system it can be trained to achieve long-term control of HIV. 
That's a huge shift in thinking. It opens up a world of possibilities. Managing HIV without a lifetime of medication, it could become a reality. Now, I'm sure some people are thinking, haven't we heard this before? You know, HIV cures that turned out to be, well, not quite cures. What makes this different? What sets it apart from those past attempts? It's a fair question. HIV cure research has had its ups and downs, for sure. But this trial, a few things stand out. Let's dive into that. First, the emphasis on early treatment. It seems like starting art right away. That might be a key piece of the puzzle here. Why is that so important for potentially achieving a cure? It goes back to those viral reservoirs. Early treatment, it limits them. And the immune system, it's stronger, more responsive early on. It's like you're catching the virus off guard and giving the body the best chance to fight back effectively. The timing is everything. Then there's the combination approach, RT, plus these immune boosters. It feels like that one-two punch is what's making a difference. You've got RT suppressing the virus, giving the immune system some breathing room, and then the immune boosters come in, they strengthen those specific defenses that can target HIV. It's a synergy, a collaboration. And the third point, the location, Africa. Doing the research where the burden of HIV is highest, that's crucial for making sure any treatments will be relevant and accessible where they're needed most. Absolutely. It's research grounded in reality, focused on solutions that can make a real difference. The information also mentioned the Berlin patient, a past case. Remind us what happened there and why this new approach seems more, well, realistic for most people. The Berlin patient received a bone marrow transplant from a donor with a rare genetic mutation that makes them resistant to HIV. It worked, he's been in remission for years, but bone marrow transplants, they're complex, risky, very expensive. It's not something you can do for millions of people. So not a scalable solution. This new approach, if it pans out, it seems like it could be much more widely applicable and less invasive. Exactly. It's about harnessing the power of the immune system, something everyone has, not relying on rare donors or extreme procedures. Now let's talk about the implications for an HIV vaccine, something else researchers have been working on for a long time. How could these findings help guide that research? This trial gives us a peek into what successful HIV control looks like at the immune system level. By studying those who stayed virus-free off ART, we can identify the specific antibodies, the T cells, the mechanisms that are working. So it's like a blueprint showing us what we need to teach the immune system to do. Yes, and that knowledge can guide vaccine development. The goal would be a vaccine that triggers those same protective responses, preventing infection in the first place. Prevention. That's the ultimate goal. So everyone's wondering, when could this kind of treatment be available? The information gives a timeline. Larger trials in 2025, 2026, maybe early access programs 2027, 2030, wider rollout beyond 2030, if all goes well. Not immediate, but progress is being made. We need to be realistic. These early results are exciting, but we need confirmation in larger, more diverse groups. We need to refine the treatment, make sure it's safe and effective long-term. Early access could happen sooner for some, but widespread availability will take time. So while we wait, it's crucial to stay safe. Mm. The information has some key advice. Regular HIV testing, that's vital for everyone. Early detection makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Early detection means early treatment, which can slow the disease, prevent transmission. It's crucial. And for those already living with HIV on RPT, it's critical to stick with your medication as prescribed. Don't change anything without talking to your doctor. RT adherence is so important. It keeps the virus suppressed, prevents drug resistance, helps you stay healthy. Your doctor is your partner in this. And for those who are HIV negative, PAP is a powerful tool for prevention. It can drastically reduce your risk of infection. Pre-AP, it's a game changer for prevention. Talk to your doctor, a healthcare provider. There are resources available. The information even mentions checking the description for free HIV testing locations. Access to testing is so important. Knowing your status is the first step. It allows you to take control of your health, make informed decisions. So as we wrap up this deep dive, it really feels like we're on the cusp of something big, a medical revolution in HIV. A cure, once a distant dream, now feels like a real possibility. These findings are a leap forward. We're understanding HIV in new ways, and the possibility of long-term remission without medication, it's becoming more and more tangible. And the fact that this is happening in Africa, a region so deeply affected by HIV, it gives hope that a cure, when it comes, will reach those who need it most. It's a testament to the power of research, innovation, and collaboration. Investing in science where the need is greatest, that's how we make real progress.
So I'll leave you with this. Could this be the beginning of the end for HIV as we've known it? What are your thoughts on this? Share them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And if you found this deep dive helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future updates. There's a lot more to come as this story unfolds.